Good morning. I want to welcome you home today. It's Sunday, February 22nd, 2022. Anybody know what Sunday it is? You know what? Can you go get my white stole and the, and the pin that goes with it? I have to wear white. Why, why do I have to wear white? Who said it? Anybody say it's Transfiguration Sunday? So I, uh, um, God is so good um, to remind us, uh, well, for me, maybe you're like me, that we're not perfect. We make mistakes all the time, you know? So like the green, uh, that represents the growth of the church here. And then the vestments are changed to, to white to, to represent big, big events like a baptism. That's, that's white. Or uh, uh, like um, the Transfiguration Sunday. It's a brilliant, it's a dally, uh, 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 dazzling, bright. It's just unbelievably good. And uh, <laughs> you always think you're going to prepare a sermon, and then it shows, uh, God shows up and takes over the show, which he should. So um, it's wonderful. Uh, just to let you know that it wasn't Moses. Um, that led the Israelites free. It was God, and God used Moses. And Moses was not a perfect individual. Plenty of mistakes. He uh, got angry, took his staff, and he smacked that rock to get the water out. And it kept him from see, going into the Promised Land with the Israelites. But it didn't slow old Moses down because Moses was, you know, his eyes didn't dim. He had to live to be 120 years old. He had the virility. And the masculinity as a 20-year-old young man at age 120. He was climbing mountains. You don't believe me, you look it up. It's true. So today is Transfiguration Sunday. And as we start to start the service, God takes over immediately. And that's a good thing. So yeah, I think we're all in store for something good today. I mean, when that happens, when God shows up in the house and the flames are flying and it gets brilliant and dalliant and lights are going, just grab my feet in case I get going up there too high. Okay, Robbie, you just pull me right back down. Erica, maybe you maybe you do it, okay? Um, yeah, so the, the sermon, it's called The Chosen. The Chosen. In the sermon, you're going to hear about the transfiguration um, of the chosen. This church, Shepherd of the Valley, Redo Fitness, has a great agenda. Your sins, all of them, for Christ's forgiveness, okay? So if you're looking... Uh, for a place. You got some barriers. You got some blockage, if you will. I guarantee you, like a wrecking ball, that Holy Spirit, that fiery Lord is just going to come in and knock that stuff right off from you. And if you're looking for a place to feel like you belong, like you have some roots that go deep, it's not going to wash off. If you're looking for that boat, so when the storms come blasting up against you, you're in the right place today. Because Jesus Christ is going to meet you right where you're at. He's not going to scare you. not going to make you feel bad. not going to shame you, fill you full of guilt. He's going to restore you. He's going to give you eyes to see. A circumcision of the heart. An awakening, if you will. Like you're going to be fully awake. From a sleeping slumberness to a bright-eyed, bushy tail. Ready to go, Christian, today. So welcome aboard, Shepherd of the Valley, Redo Fitness, the little church on the hill that keeps on going. Your sins for Christ's forgiveness on February 22nd, 2020. The Chosen, you're going to hear about Moses, Elijah, being on top of a mountain with Brother Peter, Brother James, Brother John, with our Lord and Savior. You're going to know a couple of things, a couple of truths. When God makes His presence known, you realize He's always been there. He's never left you. When you come into that, what is this? He's always been here. That's, that's number one truth you're going to see. You're also going to see in the sermon who it is that prepares you to meet that presence. <laughs> you want to be prepared to meet that. I guarantee you that. And you want to have Jesus Christ, the one who prepares you to meet God the Father. Because on your own, not very good things are going to happen. And then you're also going to see the powerful Holy Spirit leading you and strengthening you and comforting you in the faith. So your faith is going to get stronger. You're going to see some cool things in the sermon today. So tips on honesty. I wrote them down. Um, everybody likes to hear honesty. Yeah. Here's some tips. 
about being honest. You ready for the first obvious one? Captain obvious, right? <laughs> be truthful. <laughs> Tip number one, be truthful. Tell the truth. Don't lie. Okay, that's number one. Tip number two, doggone it, don't exaggerate. Don't exaggerate. Just don't embellish. If the fish was only this big, don't go that big, you know. If you've only made one touchdown in a football game, don't be telling everybody you won the game. That's not how it goes, right? So don't embellish, don't exaggerate. That's your tip number two. And number three, be straightforward. And that's exactly what's going to happen in this message today. Because you know what? I'm, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am so tired in a world full of falseness. I'm so sick and tired of hearing half-baked Christians tell half-baked truths. I'm so sick and tired of that. Because you know what that leads to? That leads to a weakness, a sickness, a canker that leads to hopelessness, depressions and suicides. And it enhances the ability for somebody to take a drug that will put them to the death side of things. So we're going to cut through that stuff. We're going to speak the truth today in the sermon. Okay, amen? Blessings on your service.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept records of our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are all gathered here today to hear God's word and call upon him in our prayer, in our praise, and to receive our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the fellowship of his holy altar, let's first consider our sins, our unworthiness, and to confess them before our God and to one another that we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and that's the things that we've done and we have not done. Omission and commission, things we should have done and things we didn't do. Let's, let's tell these to God in our conscience and, and, and out loud that we are sinners. So now, together as his rightful children, made that way in your baptism, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of a loving God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, thus saying, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. I bring you such good news this Sunday morning. It's Transfiguration Sunday. You all light up. From as far as the east is from you west, your sins are removed. You are forgiven. The Almighty God has given you mercy in His Son, Jesus Christ. It is He who has died and rose on the third day, and is for His sake, forgives you all your sins. Now, as a called and ordained servant of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. The Lord is great in Zion. Let them praise your great and awesome name. The king in his might loves justice. You have executed justice. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship his foot still. Holy is he. Glory be to and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together we say the collect. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith. Moses and Elijah, in the voice that came from the bright cloud, your wonderful overshadowed the adoption of grace. Merciful, make us co heirs of the King. Bring us to the fullness of your inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with the readings today. First reading today comes to us from the 34th chapter of Deuteronomy beginning at the 34th verse. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to the Mount of Nabo at the top of Pisgah with, in the opposite of Jericho. And the Lord showed him the, all the land. He showed him Gilead as far as Dan, and Nephali in the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh and all the land of Judah as far as the West Sea, the, ne the Negeb, the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, in the city of the psalm tree, palm trees, and Zoar, and the land, he said to him, This is the land which I had sworn to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And God buried him in the valley of the land of Moab opposite of Peth Peor, but no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he had died. His eyes were undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. 
Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended, and Joshua, the son of Nun, full of the Holy Spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid hands upon him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there was not arisen a prophet since in it. In Israel, like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord had sent upon him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his servants in, that, in his land, and for all the mighty power of all the great deeds of the terror that Moses did in the sight of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading today is in the third chapter of Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him, who was appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses as much more glory as the builder of the house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over all God's house as son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast to our confidence in our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise if you're able in the reading of the Holy Gospel, ninth chapter of St. Luke. Now about eight days after these things, he being Jesus took him, Peter and John and James, and he went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men became talking with him. It was Moses and Elijah, who appeared in the glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory of the two men and who stood with them. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said, Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. And as he was saying these things, a cloud overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And the voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. We confess our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father only, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and thirty he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and make yourself comfortable as I bring you such good news from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's about time we get some good news to you who are loved by God. He loves you. He cares for you. He's with you. Grace and peace to you from a loving, caring God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You guys pray? I hope you do. Praying is... The lifeblood, it's what strengthens you. I wrote a note, it says, Good morning to you. Uh, be grateful as you pray to the God who created you, the creator of the universe. Gratefully pray to God and you will be dazzling bright like your son, Jesus Christ. 
Just as he was dazzling as he was praying, so are you as you pray. Brilliance. When you pray to the one who created you, you're fully alive. You are fully conscious. You are awake by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is Christ's dazzling brilliance that awakens you. He prepares you now. He prepares you now to meet God who it is that created you. It's not scary. It's beautiful. You are alive this day for the preparation for eternity and salvation. It's a beautiful thing. Moses was a faithful servant to Yahweh, to our God, Jehovah. He was a very effective servant. He shared the message that God gave to him to share with the Israelites. It was God's law. God's law. You shall have no other gods before me. Moses did this brilliantly. God used Moses to give people law. Because without law, it's chaos and it's disorder. Moses believed in the hope of the promise of the Messiah to come. He believed that there would be a prophet lifted up out of the line of him that would be greater than himself. He believed in Yahshua Moshika, Messiah. This is his hope. It's the same hope that saved Adam and Eve and all sense. It's the same faith this Moses is preaching about. Law. God forgave Moses from all his anger and all his mistakes, his shortcomings. God used Moses to bring people hope. Law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. You will not love anything other like God. God alone. Why? Why, why not put anything in front of God? Because anything in front of God is not love. God's law is love. Many listened to this beautiful law of the Lord, like, you know, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't murder, <laughs> which Moses did, by the way. Don't do those things. And people listened. And they repented. They were sorry. And they were forgiven. Truly, we're sorry. And that's what the purpose of the law was for. Repent. Make straight way the path of the way for the one to come. That was the fiery preacher, John the Baptizer, preached. Make straight paths. No, not all paths. No, not broad. No, not... No, no, narrow is the way to salvation. Broad is the path of death and the underworld and destruction. Stay away from that. Choose the way of the Lord. Jewish people, <laughs> yeah, some of them said, yes, we, we're in. We, we've been enlightened. We've been transfigured. And they were. And you could tell by the way they lived their lives. They said, you know what? Egypt and Pharaoh and all that stuff? Hmm. I want it. I want the gold. I want the chariots. I want the fame. But no, no. I'm not going to buy into it. I'm going to, I'm going to live off and, 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 and follow the way of the Lord. It'll be a harder, harder walk, okay? Saying no to Pharaoh and the, the Egyptian easiness. But others said, you know what, Moses? Just don't see that. I don't see your God. I know your face is so blinding bright because you came off the mountaintop and you're blinding us with your message, but we just don't see it. Nah. Nah, we're going to go. You know what? Your way is too tight, too narrow. We have a better over here. We'll go over there. And then they did. And they're gone. Okay? Don't see it, Moses. After all, God is going to save all of us anyway. <laughs> God's just going to save us anyway. Because we're from the line of Abraham. Yeah. Yeah, right. Even the kids of the kingdom of the Most High get kicked out, let me tell you. He kicked out the angels! What fool would think that they wouldn't get kicked out? Come on. Silly people. Just don't see it, Moses. 
Did you know, this is a true stat, according to Stadia.com, that the total investment over media, newspaper, radio, whatever, that companies spend in the United States in the year 2020 was $225.8 billion. $225.8 billion. That'll buy us a new parking lot and some nicer immediate back there for Michael. They say by the year 2024, that number is going to grow to $322 billion dollars just to get you to look at their product and services. That's a lot of getting you to see something clearly. That's a lot of money. What we couldn't do with a fraction of that cash. Companies know that effective marketing and advertising reaches the consumer. So they'll buy their products and services. The key is effective communication. Effective communication. Moses was a good communicator. Even the, 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 they say he stuttered a little. Had to have Aaron help him out a little bit. That's what they say. I wasn't there. As far as I know, Moses is pretty darn smart. And when he spoke, you understood exactly what he said. If you don't obey God, you're going to burn in hell. That's exactly what he said. And people heard him. And they listened. They paid attention to him. They didn't say not nah of that. Moses wasn't fooling. Neither is God. The key is effective and quality. Do not exaggerate. Do not embellish. Be straightforward. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Show them what you're going to show them. And then tell them what you showed them and show them what you showed them. Be what you say you're going to be. Service. Be effective. Quality. So, I looked up some ads. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun looking at advertisements. There's commercials that pop up, don't you? You're like, what kind of commercial was that? You ever see those commercials? You're watching your favorite movie or your favorite sports, and there's some crazy commercial pops up, and you're like, what was that? Yeah, well, once in a while, you get some good ones. I had this fun one. It was during the Super Bowl. It was uh, to sell crypto. This is a fun one. It's okay. Larry, yeah, Larry, Larry David. He's a Jewish man. Nah. <laughs> he goes, there's, there's a, his, his trademark is nah. You, you might remember that commercial. This guy brings the wheel to this guy. He says, look, look what I invented. It's a wheel. Guy looks at the wheel and says, nah, I don't see it. It's not going to work, that wheel. And then he brings, him, brings David the, the forks, right? Dave, look, at I created these forks. And this Larry, Larry guy goes, nah, I got 10 of them here. See, I, got, I don't need a fork. I just don't see how the fork is going to actually ever pay off. Remember that commercial? You guys, you guys know this one? How, and then Edison comes with the light bulb to the same guy. and says, hey, look, I created the light. And the guy goes, nah. I don't see it. <laughs> Just don't see it. Does your wife know what you've been doing? Spending all that time trying to create a light bulb? Are you some kind of idiot? I just don't see it. Yeah, that walk, man, that's not going to work. Nah, just don't see it. Don't see how anybody's going to want to have that. Nah, I just don't see it. Ever been sold something by false advertisement? You ever been fooled? I sure haven't. No. You ever been given an untruth as a truth? Misleading information? You ever been sold something that wasn't true? Has that ever happened to you? You ever had the classic bait and switch with a car rental? <laughs> I got fooled with that one. I had the economic car, right? I had already pre-done this thing. I showed up. My wife, just she's rolling over there because she's like, yeah, you didn't even care. But I go up there like, no, we don't have that car anymore, but we have this supercharger boom, for an extra 200 bucks. You can have that one for an extra 200 bucks. They bait and switch me, and I'm like, oh, I can't, I, if I can't have mine, what I got. See, if you hang to the truth, they had to give me the car that I rented, but I didn't know that. And I seen this fancy charger. It was black and everything. It had big meats on the back. It was fun. Cost me extra 200 bucks. A lesson well learned. Bait switch. Pictures of advertisements. This beautiful picture. And that's what you get instead of the actual product that you bought. Right, Rick? <laughs> they send her the pitch. She was on eBay. And it was like, here's a picture of what she wanted. So they send her the picture of what she wanted instead of the actual thing. you got to read the small advertisement. Because there are false advertisements. 
You look at the menu, right? And you see this beautiful pizza. And you get this little dinky pot pie thing. Right. It's like this. Nah. There's many faiths. There's many truths out there. No worries. All people are going to get to heaven. Don't you worry about a thing. You'll be okay. Don't worry about it. There's <laughs> that hell thing. That gnashing of teeth thing, that death thing, nah, that's just to scare kids. That's not forever. Come on. God's, gonna, every, God's got everything under control. It's going to be all right. Thank God for Moses. Thought Moses and the faith that was given to Moses, we'd all be thinking like that. Moses told the truth. He told the truth to a Jewish nation. He gave them the law. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. He wasn't selling falseness. He was giving them the truth, spoke truth to them. This is soul-saving stuff. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. It is nearer today than ever before. That is true. That is for sure. There is a real place. There is a new heaven, and there is a new earth awaiting for you, those who believe in the truth. Just as there is a place for those who do not believe that. Death, the damnation of sin and the devil, that eternal damnation, that's a real thing. And there is no place for God's children to go, here or in the afterworld. God's eternal salvation is given unto you, as preached by the prophet Moses. Moses had no tolerance for false teachers, neither do we. He made people aware of sin, and so do we. He showed people the sin sickness of a falseness. You know the cool thing that I came across, and you can maybe look this up when you got some time, Jude, the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 9. I found a really cool thing, because I'm not an angelologist, but it mentions Gabriel there. And it says something really interesting about how Gabriel is negotiating with Satan for the body of Moses in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 9. I found that interesting. It's for another sermon. But he simply says to the angel, Gabriel says to Lucifer, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. That makes sense to me. It's believable. So read it. Look it up. In Deuteronomy 34, 7, Moses said, uh, the Bible tells us Moses' eyes were undimmed. His vim and his vigor were unabated. Moses needed no retirement plan. Moses needed no Medicare. He needed no vitamins. God took care of Moses. He took care of you. The one true faith that saves you is Messiah. The one true faith is Christ. It is the same for Moses as it was for all those preachers and prophets since then. It's the truth for the disciples that were Jesus Christ. It is the truth for me, and it is the truth for you. That's Job chapter 1 there, Erica. The followers of God who have been purified in the rites of holy baptism, you know this to be true. And you know this to be true, you are as bright and as brilliant as the transfiguration on the top of the mountain. God has reconciled the whole world unto himself. That part is true. Through the birth, through the ministry, and the life, and the death, and the resurrection of your King, Jesus Christ, that is true. That is true. God commands you and me that that reconciliation be shared with everyone in love, bringing them into the Word of God, in the purity and into the truth. You bring people into the Word of God. And the transfiguration is done by the powerful Holy Spirit. Amen. The truth is God. God wants all people to be loved. God wants all people to be saved. 
He wants every single one saved. However, just as Satan was kicked out of heaven, just as the promised people are kicked out of heaven, according to the Scriptures, so will all unbelievers be blocked from the new heaven and the new glory. They will not have fun there. They don't have fun there now. God does not make anybody love Him. God does not make you love Him. He's a loving, caring God. He will not make you love Him in this life or the next. He does not do that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. You that do, you have eternal life. He will, not, he will not do that for you. You have to. He'll help you. He'll empower you to do it. He'll equip you. He'll give you as many redos in life as you need. But He will not make you. Not in this life or the next. And nobody or nothing can do it for you. You follow? God loves you. This is the way of forgiveness of sins. It is the same way that saved Moses of old. It is the same message that Jesus Christ and all the disciples taught in the New Testament. It is Jesus Christ and Christ alone that tr transfigures you and me to stay. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Peter and James and John are up on the top of the mountain. They get to see a beautiful radiance. They get to see heaven meet mortal men. The glory and the brilliance and the radiance of Christ is illuminating. And they hear God saying, this is my one. I wake you up. That woke Brother John up and Peter. It was a time for awakening. A time to be awakened from your sleep and your slumber. Wake up. Come on. There's not a minute to lose. There's no time from foolery. Jump for the falseness. Don't be missold a bag of tricks. There's time for you yet. Wake up. Listen to the truth. Christ is greater because He's the Son of God. And listen to Him. He says there will be gnashing of teeth. He wouldn't have not said that if it was not true. Be careful. Listen to Jesus. Listen to Him. He is the beloved Son of God, the chosen one. He is in the presence, in the brilliance of light. He is always with you. He is with you now. He is with you here. He's with you in your heart and in your mind. And He is preparing your souls for home. He strengthens our faith. He awakens us into the realization that we are sinners and we have to repent and we're sorry for our sin. We can see that clearly now. Awaken from the heavy sleep of sin. The laziness of false idolatry. And God says in the light of the cloud, listen to my son. Listen to my son. And I, I, I second that. Listen to Jesus. This, the disciples, they, they know. They're thinking. They're not saying a word when they come off that mountain. They know. They've seen the eternal salvation. Now we like to think that uh, we're in charge of our decisions. We all do. <laughs> Yet, as advertising dollars will tell you, that may not always be true because they're not spending close to $300 billion dollars to compromise the subconscious mind so you buy the red car versus the blue car. They spend big... So you got to think twice about what you're doing. Come on. Subconsciously, we do things. We're influenced in the decisions that we make. That is why you like certain things or don't like certain things. That's why you buy certain foods and drink certain things. That's why you spend money to take glamorous sunny destinations versus snowy Minnesota. Buy cars and trucks 
They have leather and certain colors. That's why you do that. That's why you, you, you've been programmed. We drink adult fruity drinks, right? They have fizzy and they taste like apricots. And, you know, we, we jump out of airplanes for whatever reason we do that, right? Do crazy things. We just like, why do we do that? I don't know. Just do that. Today we are consumed by the desires of the world. We are. We all fall victim to it. It's hard. I get it. We're consumed. We want to be liked. We don't want to ruffle feathers. Come on. Let's face it. We want to be liked. You know, and when you, when you fall into a sickness of embellication of, yeah, everybody's going to be okay, it weakens you. It, 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 it lessens you. It makes you sick. I know this to be true because when you, when you back away from being a peculiar race, God made you to be a peculiar race. You're different. Okay, when you like when you come here, you are separated yourself from the world. You ever go to a place where you feel like you're at a rock concert and it was just like a really good entertainment show? That's where you were. You were at a rock concert and you were in an entertainment show. But if you come into a holy service and you felt a great need to repent and have sin and you felt your sins forgiven, now you're a peculiar race. Now you know the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Okay? That separates you. Do not be like the world. Do not be consumed by the world. Be of the world, but don't ever, ever go along with the false marketing of a false idea because everybody's doing it. Whoa! Stop it. Pump the brakes. More than ever this day, I want you to realize we need a revitalization. We need to revive the truth. We need to speak truth and straightforwardness. In the way you live your life, don't fool yourself. In the way you talk, people need truth. You know when people are so lost and so confused and so messed up, the last thing that you should ever do is to lie to that person. Ah, oh, it's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. Tell the truth. If they got a cancer and they're going to die, they got to know it. Tell the truth. And if you don't know the truth, get into the Word of God so you know the truth. Truth will bring life. They need truth. They need Jesus Christ who said this, if you love Me, you will keep My commandments. You will keep My commandments. Do not lie. Do not steal. Do not cheat. Follow what Jesus did. And if you do, Jesus said, I'll pray to the Father for you. And He will send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And you will know the truth and you'll be in eternity with Him. The Holy Spirit is truth whom the world does not know. They cannot know. Only you know. They neither know Him nor can they see the powerful Holy Spirit. You know Him. You know Him. You know Him. I know you know Him. And He knows you. Because He came to you. And you heard Him today in this holy service. Amen? And amen. May the powerful Holy Spirit be with you this day. And bring you peace, love, and joy to the resurrection of your true glory. Amen? And amen. <laughs> now we continue with the offerings of the church. This is a great way. To show the Lord and everybody else you're a peculiar person. This little church needs your help and so do the people of Hastings, Minnesota. So, so your tithe then. Cannot give God. Whatever you give, He'll bless you more. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, then give donations. Contribute. Whatever you want to be to be a sustainer. Help us to help others because what we do here makes a difference around the world. So dial 844-612- 5821, set up an ongoing contribution, that'd be good, or a tithe, and do it as often as you can, okay? So let's bless these gifts as they come in, all right? Mike, you want to kick her over for me? Yeah, thank you. God, it is you who crowned your son, and you chose him, just like you chose us. He is our king. He is the king of kings. His name is Jesus Christ. You transfigured him and you transfigure all who believe in him. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we have eternal salvation. 
through His merciful, passionate, suffering and death and resurrection, we are illuminated in brilliant light. We love you, all-powerful God. Thank you for the helper, your Holy Spirit. We now have peace in our hearts. You make us alive. It is true love that now burns in our hearts and that we are made ready for the return of our King, Jesus Christ. He is the true shepherd and the perfecter of our faith. To God in the highest, all glory be given. Receive now our gifts as a token of our gratitude and as a promise to go and to live as living witnesses, to live our lives as a sacrifice for you, for the sake of the King who offered himself for us. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the church. Let us now pray for the whole church, the church universal that teaches the one true faith in Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in prayer, your son, Jesus, revealed his glory to Peter, James, and Brother John. Grant that we also, here gathered in prayer, would see Jesus Christ by faith and receive him and from him the redemption that he's accomplished for us on that cross and that resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, your son shines. He shines in the word, that resurrected light. Illuminate your church, this little church on the hill. Let it be the beacon drawing all in that need to be restored, revived, awoke. With the brilliance and the brightness of Christ, let this little church tell the whole world your story. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as you appointed Moses of old to lead your people, so you also sent your son, Jesus Christ, the founder and the leader of the church. Sustain us from age to age. Grant young men virility and masculinity. Grant women strength of wisdom to take care of their homes. Grant pastors to teach the truth with righteousness to guide people in the days that are about to fall upon us. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son cares faithfully for this church and all those churches that preach and teach the truth. Grant us with sure confidence in Christ and give us faithful hearts to serve Him according to the calling that He's given to all of us. Lord, in Your mercy. Almighty God, You alone established all authority here and in heaven. We ask a special blessing upon President Joe Biden and those that are entrusted. Give them, Lord God, wisdom in their responsibility here and around the world that they would serve their country and their communities with holy integrity and honor for the well-being of all the citizens. Grant that all divisions here and abroad and conflict would be stifled and that there would be unity, peace, and quietness. Lord, in your mercy, Father of all comfort, as we follow your way, the way of all the true apostles, into your presence. You join our prayers in the ceaseless petitions of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear us now for the sake of those who are in trouble. We lift up Claudia's brother who's on the last legs of uh, receiving chemotherapy. Let's ask for that this that puts cancer back because that's that is from the devil, Lord. And let's Claudia bring peace to Claudia's family. We ask, Lord, that you'll bless. Uh, those who are not here, uh, those who are traveling, the Johnsons, Troy and his, his wife, uh, Stephen and his family, Aaron, we miss you. Come back to church. We hope to see you soon. Uh, for for Carrie, Travis's wife, and for his family, uh, Lord God, you bless them and, and, and strengthen their home. And all those who are here this day that they know uh, that they know in their minds that need your blessings. We ask for a special blessing for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day, this glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on that Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to your Son, Jesus, 
and fix our eyes upon Him, doing what He did, serving, loving, praying, with His innocent suffering to the death for our forgiveness. Help us to carry our crosses. By Your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trials. Help us, Lord God, when we're tempted, when we're persecuted. Preserve us all the way to the end that we may die in a blessed death, believing in your beloved chosen Son with whom you are well pleased. Through that same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, we all say, Amen. Won't you please join me now in saying uh, the Lord's Prayer. We dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Receive now the benediction. As the helmet of salvation has been firmly upon you, as the horn that you blow, you bring the good news of Jesus Christ and the walls, just like that fell at Jericho, will fall around you. You will have shoes that are run so fast, you'll have peace as you run through the shadows of the valley of death. You've been given a mighty sword. It's called the truth. The Holy Spirit wield it well now. The belt of truth is upon you. You have a shield that will protect you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
to thank everybody for coming this Sunday. Blessings on your week. We have a good discussion topic tomorrow, Monday night at 6 o'clock. Pop on downstairs to see what it is. Wednesday night Bible study at 6 and next Sunday at 10.